to win a college baseball game, and they got their work cut out for them here. And Mississippi State trying to get on track after being swept in Arkansas last week, big for both sides. Well, both teams really fighting for position in the upcoming SEC tournament at the Hoover Met. And as you look at the standings right now, Arkansas leading in the Western Division, and the Gators slightly ahead in the East, but Florida's position very precarious right now. They have no room for error. No room for error, and because of what happened last week, last week was sweeps week in the SEC. <laughs> it wasn't added sex and violence. It was ten <laughs> out of the 12 teams in the SEC were involved in some kind of sweep. Well, the Gators come in here having won five consecutive Southeastern Conference games, and then next weekend, back at McKeithen Stadium for the regular season finale series against yeah. Alabama, these six games for Florida in the Western Division, where the Gators are just one and eight in the West, so they've got some tough opponents, no question about it. Yeah, they got to go to Mississippi State, <laughs> win there, then they got to play Alabama at home, another tough opponent, another perennial College World Series team, and win there at home there against Alabama. It's tough. And then Mississippi State has to go to you know, have Ole Miss mm. uh, as their opponent mm -hmm. next weekend, and they're a tough rival. So it's tough for both clubs. Well, it really is. These should be some great baseball, not only this weekend, but next weekend as well. The Gators have won five consecutive games in the Southeastern Conference. Their veterans have started to step up, and Mark Ellis and Greg Catalanotti, and they'll need to lead the Florida Gators. Yeah, Mark Ellis, since he came to the University of Florida, he's been nothing but consistent. Mark Ellis has vaulted himself into the fifth all-time in hits in the Southeastern Conference career-wise. And he's a guy that day in, day out, just gets the job done. A lot of big, big, big RBIs from Mark Ellis in his college career. Ellis already holds the Gator record for career doubles as well as total bases. And Greg Catalanotti is also having a nice year. Boy, I tell you, another consistent guy for two years, a Juco transfer, power from both sides, great throwing arm. And he got him going against South Carolina and turned the Gator season around the SEC just two weekends ago. Last weekend in Nashville, Ellis had nine Nine hits for the Gators. His average now at 342. Those two Florida players are the top RBI and home run producers on this team. As for Mississippi State, this is a ball club that leads the Southeastern Conference with a 339 team batting average. And they got a great guy in Cliff Wren, the transfer from Southern Mississippi, a walk-on. He was All-Conference USA DH last year. Is hitting 370 with 12 home runs and 50 RBIs. That is great production out of a walk-on. <laughs> Cliff Wren, an outstanding player and a hustle player as well, but he's one of a host of great hitters, and included Brian Weiss as well. Brian Weiss was a leadoff hitter last year for Pat McMahon's club that went to the College World Series, but this year he's down in the fourth spot with 14 home runs, 47 RBIs. These two guys, if they get going, could be more offensive than actor George Kennedy's breath. <laughs> well, there you see Rand at 370, Weiss at 344, and they're not the top hitters on the team because Travis Chapman checks in at 394. It's a Mississippi State team leading the league in hitting and in pitching and leading the country in defense. It's the Gators with Jeff Cardozo and Brian Compton for Mississippi State. Those are the pitchers back with baseball in just a moment. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Deardorff. Where would you go for a home equity loan? Let's have a field in Starkville, Mississippi, as the Florida Gators and the Mississippi State Bulldogs about ready to play game one of this three-game series. Andy Lopez in his fifth year at Florida, 198 wins, 103 losses as head coach of the Gators in his 17th year overall, 607 wins, 362 defeats. And for Andy Lopez, here's the Gator batting order tonight. The shortstop, Mark Ellis, We'll lead it off. Let's take a look at the Mississippi State defense. John Knott in left, Josh West in center, Brian Reese in right. The infield from third to first has Martin Chapman, Lauterhouse, and Ren Curry catching. And on the mound for the Bulldogs is Brian Compton. A 6-1, 170-pound senior right-hander. There's a good look at Compton. He's from Brandon, Mississippi. A record of 5-1, a 4.21 ERA, and he's pitched 47 innings. He has walked 20, struck out 53, Brian Compton. The batting order that Compton will face has Mark Ellis leading off at shortstop. Kurt Keene, the third baseman who also leads the Gators in stolen bases, will bat second. Greg Catalanotti in right field, the leading home run and RBI guy. Jason Dill back healthy now is the DH, and he's leading the team in on-base percentage. Peter Nystrom in left field batting fifth. Ryan Sheely, one of the most improved Gators now at first base batting sixth. The surprise of the last three weeks for Florida, second baseman Taylor Wood batting seventh. Matt Goss, a fine defensive center fielder, batting eighth, and Todd Johannes, the catcher, is batting ninth. 
a beautiful night for baseball here in Starkville. The temperature near 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. And we should have a very fine crowd as they always do here at Duty Noble Field for this game tonight here uh, between the Gators and the Bulldogs. This is the 59th meeting in the series. Florida has 30 wins, Mississippi State 28. The Gators have won 16 of the last 18 games in this series. Compton at 5 and 1 with a 4.21 ERA. The opponent's batting 262 against him. He has not been the Friday night starter. They've kind of shaken up their starting rotation. They're trying to snap a Friday night losing streak. They've lost four straight Friday night games. And the first pitch sails in a little high, and we're underway tonight. As Mark, Mark Ellis is a great leadoff guy. He sets the tone for the Gators. On base percentage is outstanding. And, and once he gets going, it gets the offense crank. So Captain is missed now with the first two pitches. Ellis is hitting 342. He's hit safely in four of his last five games. He has 10 hits in his last 25 at bats. When the Gators swept Vanderbilt last weekend, Ellis had nine hits in the series. He had four Saturday and four more on Sunday. But in the Gators' midweek loss this week to South Florida, Ellis took the collar, went 0 for 5. This pitch popped up and will make the seats as well. Brian Compton is a, a guy that he's fastball slider straight change. He, he was another guy who was a walk on 88 miles an hour is about where his fastball tops out at but uh, did an outstanding job this year and he really has earned this this Friday night start. Got Ellis out in front on the breaking ball and the shortstop Travis Chapman one gone. Chapman is the everyday shortstop. He's one of two Bulldogs who has started every game this season. Now Kirk Keene hitting 284 with four homers, 31 runs batted in. Swinging a hot bat for Florida. All right! Keene has hit safely in six of his last seven games. He has 12 hits in his last 34 at bats for a 353 average, so his average is on the climb. You can see that fastball, a little run to it. That's the two-seamer. And he started off keen with a uh, slider. Threw that for a strike, which it makes it doubly tough. This is the first start for Brian Compton in the SEC. Right off the end of the bat. You can see with that slider, he threw it at a great spot right there. Threw an outer third of the plate, had it break away, and all Keen could do is get the top part of the bat on it to stay alive. You're going to see right here where this pitch starts out at. Outer third, and it's going to break maybe an inch or two outside the strike zone, and Keen did all he could do just to get a piece of it. The home plate umpire tonight is John Whitaker. The first base umpire is Mark McGill. And the third base umpire tonight is Mike Kiernan. Hey. Another off the end of the bat. Right field is the sun field here at Duty Noble. But Weiss battles the sun. He's used to it. And two out. Yeah, that was a lot harder play than it looked, Mick. As soon as that ball is hit, it's right where the sun is setting. That's what Weiss has to negotiate when he goes after it. Again, another slider where Kane just gets the end of the bat on it. And right from the start, you could see him battling right there. And that, that looked routine, but it sure wasn't. Two out, nobody on base for Greg Catalanotti. He's hit safely in eight in the last nine games. Hitting 400 over the nine game stretch. And the cat's a guy that could tie one of these sliders and, and give it a charge and hit it out of here. <laughs> Catalanotti has driven in a run in nine consecutive games. Nice pitch on the corner. 
You can see they're kind of staying away from him, not throwing the slider at him because they know that the Catman likes, as many lefty power hitters do, the, the ball down and in. I think he was thinking fastball right there because that was a pitch that I think that uh, the Catman can turn on if he guesses right. Or as Reggie Jackson used to say, I don't guess, I anticipate. <laughs> yeah. Ran that one in on him a little bit, fought it off. See if he goes here with a fastball, a little run going away. See if he gets Catalanoni chasing. We've seen Catalanotti do this a lot of times where he'll have a pitcher and just foul him off, foul him off, wait for him to make a mistake and then turn on one. He's got good power from both sides, something that's rare. A little bit surprised, Nick, that neither Ellis nor Keene laid down a bunt. And the reason I say it is the former Gator, Ty Martin, is making only his 10th start of the year at third base. And coming back from, among other things, uh, a separated shoulder. He took strike three, and the Gators have gone quietly. Three up and three down. Middle of the first inning. Gators nothing, and the Bulldogs are coming up. Break away. First inning. For head coach Pat McMahon, who's in his second season, 77 wins, 37 defeats. His batting order tonight, Chris Lauterhouse will lead it off. Former Gator Ty Martin at third base batting second. Brian Weiss in right field hitting third. Jamie Rock, the DH, hitting cleanup. Travis Chapman, 394 batting average, leading the team. Then Cliff Wren, Chris Curry, John Knott, and Josh West complete the batting order. The first pitch is swung out and popped up, and the catcher to Hannes dropped it. Well, the Gators have now made 89 errors. I'm sure that will be scored an error. That's a ball that Rohanna's had, but it spun right out of the glove. I think he held the mask too long, Nick. Yeah, he didn't need to hold it that long, but even if he has it in his hand the entire time, he still has to make a play like that. Well, you brought up a great stat right there. The Gators now with, uh, as you said, 89 errors. Mississippi State leading the nation with only 48. In, in an average of less than one error a game. All right. And Waterhouse makes some pay. That's been what's hurt Florida all year long. They're just so many games giving opponents 29 and 30 outs a game. Well, defensively then for Florida. Nystrom in left, Goss in center, Catlinotti in right field. The infield from third to first has Keene, Ellis, Wood, and Sheely. Johannes catching. And on the mound is Jeff Cardozo. He's making his sixth start of the year tonight. Cardozo, 2-2 two and two record with a 5.59 ERA. Now the former Gator, Ty Martin now stepping in. Martin is hitting 286 with four home runs and 28 runs batted in. He's hitless in his last 11 at-bats. Gator third baseman Kurt Keenan on the grass, expecting the bunt. Outside. Ty Martin did a solid year for the Gators last year, 305 hitter with seven home runs. This year, 286 hitter with four home runs and 28 RBIs, but it's kind of had a rough season this year, separating his shoulder in fall practice and catching mononucleosis in January. On the ground, Wood at second. Ellis for one, and they've doubled him up, 4-6-3. Florida, which leads the SEC in defense and turning double plays, 54 double plays to lead the league. And, that, and that's a very important stat right there because they, they get themselves out of trouble almost as soon as they get in it. And if you ever talk about the neighborhood play, you'll see it right here. Watch Ellis catches the ball after he touches the bag. But, of course, they, they allow that. But a great turn right there, 4-6-3. Well, here's Brian Weiss, the Mississippi State right fielder, hitting 344, leading the club with 14 home runs. And this guy, I tell you, in 96 and 97, he was on the mound. He was a five-game winner in 97. 
course, his ERA didn't reflect uh, too much promise. He was just under eight. Ball hit deep, but Goss in center field has plenty of room, and so that's it for the Bulldogs. One hit, but no runs. A double play took care of that. And so after one inning tonight here in Stockville, the Gators nothing and the Bulldogs nothing. Tinting your car windows is a good defense against the Suns' dangerous UV ray. Field in Starkville. No score between the Gators and the Bulldogs. The Gators are 30 and 19, 12 and 12 in the SEC. And Mississippi State at 35 and 14, but just 12 and 11 in league play. Top half of the second inning, it'll be the four, five, and six hitters for Coach Andy Lopez. Here's Jason Dill, a 320 hitter. Now, since his return from the injury, Dill has played five games, has driven in five runs. But I think the most important stat since his return is he's drawn eight walks. On, Brian. Opposing pitchers still pitching very cautiously to Dill. And what else it does, Mick, it makes the opponents pitch to people like Ellis and Catalanotti knowing that Dill is in the lineup. They don't have to pitch around those guys. They have to challenge it, and they've been getting hurt by Catalanotti and Ellis, just the fact that Dill's in the lineup. So that's a big part of it. All right. Compton seems to have good control of the breaking ball tonight. Yeah, his slider is sharp. You could see it right from the first inning. You can see what Curry did right there. They wanted to go up the ladder and just see if he would chase a fastball. This Mississippi State pitching staff leading the league in ERA. And you, you saw it right there, the hand the arm going up. Waterhouse to rim. First four Florida batters have been no puzzle to Brian Compton. Bullet builder Peter Nystrom. Left fielder Peter Nystrom now hitting at 291 on a nine-game hitting streak, during which he's hitting 361. He's 13 for his last 36. Yes, Our wireless microphone on the home plate umpire works well, doesn't it? <laughs> We've added John Whitaker to the broadcast team tonight. Compton's an interesting story. He he actually was cut in after fall baseball. Told he probably wasn't going to make the club. All right. And then came into the office and told the coaches, "Hey, look, I was pitching with a blister on my my finger. I didn't want to tell anybody." And he was about a good seven eight miles an hour off his regular fastball of, of about uh, 88. And he said, I just didn't want to tell anybody. I just wanted to keep throwing. I didn't want to miss the opportunity. And they let him back on, and you could see the, the difference. The guy's now in the starting rotation. So Pat McMahon giving the guy a second chance. Well, he told him to go down to the food store and get some of that pickle brine. That's right. That's what they used to say. I always heard that growing up. You get a blister in your hand, put it in pickle brine. Pitch right again on his fist. If he pops it up, there will be a play. And Wren calls it in. So five up and five down. And an inning in two thirds for Compton. And now here's Ryan Sheely. Sheely at 289. He's hit safely in 11 of his last 14 games. He's hitting 385. In that 14 game stretch. Yes, sir. Not too high now. His maturation uh, has been fun to watch. Is he's gone to a guy that's been a little bit more patient at the plate, confidence growing. 
You, know, you, you throw him into the Wolves against a Miami and a Florida State in his first two weeks of uh, college baseball, at least in his first month, he got to face those kind of pitchers. And he, that's a little intimidating, but he's, he settled down, the, down on a nice job. He stands up there with confidence now. You can see it. And Compton has fallen behind 3-0 to Sheely. And he may turn him loose here if he sees one he likes. You can see just by the size, you know this kid's got power. Nice pitch right there, looking dead red fastball on 3-1. Threw me off speed, had Ryan way out in front. That was a good job of pitching. A full count now to Sheely. Two out, nobody on base. <laughs> Impressive first two innings for Compton. He's had him six up and six down, and he struck out two. We go to the last half of the second inning. Gators nothing, and the Bulldogs nothing. How come so many professional athletes wear copper bracelets? Hey, that's Chi-Chi Rodriguez. I think my energy... Still no score in tonight's game. Go, Jamie! As Jeff Cardozo... Hey, helped out by a double play ball in the first inning. We'll now look at the four, five, and six hitters for Pat McMahon's team. Is, here's Jamie Rock. in the last seven games has seven hits. However, he's only seven for 30, hitting just 233. So his average falling a little bit. Junior from Fulton, Mississippi. Hits this a ball a mile high in the triangle out there. But Goss says no problem. Center fielder's ball coming in on it. And one away. And it's lucky that the center fielder had had the ability to make that catch because actually he's not in the direct line of the sun. The right fielder making that play is going to be a lot tougher. So the fact that Goss was able to be somewhere in the range made it a lot easier. Kalinodi, that's a lot tougher for him coming in looking directly into the sun. Travis Chapman now hitting 394, leading the club. Four home runs, 42 RBI. Chapman leads this team with 74 base hits on the year. One of a handful of Floridians on the state team. He's from Jacksonville. Yeah, he played at uh, Pat McMahon's alma mater, Bishop Kenny High School. Pat McMahon played for the great Clay Gooch down there in Jacksonville. And he went down there to, to snag Travis Chapman. He's been nothing but productive. Travis Chapman struggling a little bit, if you can call 394 struggling. <laughs> but he's only eight for his last 37. He was hitting well over 400 there for a long while. Look out. Boy, that ball got down there in a hurry. They hit that padded area down there. Well, last year, Chapman started off at short, then got moved to third. But he settled in at shortstop. A nice job fielding 961. There's Pat. His fellow watching his fellow Bishop Kenny alum. Pitch in on the fist and he fought it off. You know, Chapman, he's just a great hitter. Hit 344 as a freshman. 327 last year, but had 50 RBIs. That's the 53rd strikeout on the season for Cardozo in 58 plus innings. You see this ball here, a little bit of run on the corner. And you know, John Whitaker, we've had him before on our games, and he'll give you the corners, and that's good as long as he's doing it for both sides, moves the game along. The hitters, if they're paying attention at all, they know this going up there that they better swing the bat. But Cliff Wren is on a 13 game hitting streak. And he smokes this one, but just foul. Nick, I waited till the second inning to mention smoke because 
When you come to this ballpark, you yeah. can smell the smoke, don't you? I was I was out there behind the fences this mm. afternoon and counted 100 barbecue grills. Mm -hmm. Not 50, but there's 100 of them. They're everywhere out there. Good pitch by Cardozo. And you, you're, and you've been well fed then. Well, well, actually, I, I've been I've been told that we're going to get some barbecue sent up here. So, uh, as of now, where we let's mark it. We we haven't gotten anything yet. Zero oh, and two, the count. And he got this one down the line. Extra bases for Wren around first. He's on his way to second. He's got a stand-up double and a 14-game hitting streak for Wren. And he did that for his brother Shannon down in Florida, watching it. Of course, he said to tell his brother to send money. And he sends this one down the line. He was right on it the first pitch and just missed. And this one was a hanger, and he just kept the hands back and drove it. As you can see, not a chance to get that ball by uh, Keene. And a big double for uh, Wren with two out. Mississippi State leading the league in doubles in their on pace to set a school record for doubles. Now 132 doubles on the year. Their 1989 club had 157 two baggers. Now the catcher Chris Curry hitting 310. Five home runs, 41 runs batted in. He's a junior college transfer from Meridian Mississippi Community College, native of Conway, Arkansas. And Chris uh, got the ultimate compliment by his his fellow pitchers. They said they love to throw to him. A great job behind the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Nice pitch there. And a little off speed right there. Curry was locked in. Cardoz had off speed them a little so. Well, there's Wren doubled on an 0-2 pinch with two away. This ball smoked. Now Gloss will field it. They're going to wave around Wren. And here comes the throw. Not in time. He scores. And now on the throw to the plate, Curry taking second base. And the Bulldogs lead one to nothing. All this after two outs. It's one of those if you're Sheely cutting this thing off or letting it go, you're darned if you do and darned if you don't. You're supposed to take the order of the catcher here. But this ball dunks in. Now Goss makes an accurate throw, but it's losing steam right here. It's starting to die. And, and uh, what helps it is the, the play the plate is Wren takes too wide a turn at third base. And that gives Goss a little bit more time, but it was dying out. Perhaps if Sheely cuts it and, and puts a little more on the throw, they got to play at the plate. But it's one of those tough plays where you got to make a quick decision. John Knott now the hitter with 47 runs batted in. All right, John. Well, how important is one run in the ball game? Consider this. And when Mississippi State scores first, they are 22 and five. When the Gators have scored first this year, they are 16 and one. So both teams have been good when they've taken an early lead. Sometimes as little as just by one to nothing. Sheely has room, and the inning is over. So the Bulldogs get back-to-back -back two out hits, a Wren double and a Curry single. And after two innings in Starkville, it's Mississippi State one and Florida another. If you need tires on your car, truck, or van, we've got the best deal in town. It's the grand opening of Scotty's Tire and Automotive on Lakeland Drive. Right now, Scotty, buy three American Line tires and get one free. Watch two out single to center field, which scored teammate Cliff Wren. So the Bulldogs with a run on three hits, no errors. Gators no runs, to, no hits, and one error. As tonight's game moves on into the top half of inning number three. Here in Starkville, it'll be Taylor Wood, Matt Goss, and Todd Johannes, the lower third of Andy Lopez, Florida batting order. From Fayetteville, Arkansas nothing, Mississippi nothing. Taylor Wood hitting 385. Off the third for the a four-game hitting streak Wood. in which he has gone 10 for 19 with a pair of homers and six runs batted in in those last four games. He had a nine-hit weekend in Nashville last week.
guy that was a, I guess, came came to the University of Florida as an infielder. Made him a pitcher as late as this year, and then he's back to uh, playing infield. And he's, as you said, nine hits last weekend. They're getting their money's worth out of Taylor Wood. Fooled him there. Right, he's got the slider working. I mean, he really has got great placement on it right here. He's thrown it at the right spots. He's had the Gators off balance with that pitch tonight. Wood lost his back. Does that show you what that slider's doing right there? It's, it's just a nasty pitch. The center fielder, Matthew Gold. He's got it set up to go outer third, and Taylor is just hoping that it's the fastball that's going to come in a little bit and just really has a terrible hack at it. But there'll, there'll be other at-bats for Taylor tonight. Matt Goss on a four-game hitting streak, four for his last 12. Nine games, the Gators are seven and two. And they're hitting 335, but still just 295 for the year. Last weekend at Nashville, they hit 372, and two weeks ago in beating South Carolina in the series, they hit 351. Ty Martin playing even with the bag of third, not a bad time to drop one. Actually, Ty moved back another step or two right before the pitch. A lot of people think you, you have to bunt in the first two pitches. A 2-1 pitch is a good time to lay one down. You got a lot of people back on their heels. It's sharply but foul on the right side. Especially a guy like Goss is a little guy that runs well out of the left, you know, out of the left side batter's box, get a nice jump heading down first base. I've seen so many pitchers have their game disrupted by somebody dropping a bunt down on him. Come on, Ryan, work on it, boy. Right. Get out of here, get out of Little looper. And Lauterhouse down. Oh, now, Compton has retired the first eight okay. Gator hitters. And now with two out, take another look at this play. They just jammed him, just in on the fist. And with the aluminum bat, it almost falls in, but Lauterhouse does a nice job getting back there and making the play. He had to negotiate the sun, too. Todd Johannes. In the last nine games, struggling, just four for 30. The Gators have really been banged up at the catcher position. This Mississippi State pitching staff had an ERA of under three for the first 29 games of the season. He's got total command of that slider. He's throwing it down at the knees. And he's working the corners with it. Well, he's just... Shut down the first nine Gator hitters. Nine up and nine down. They hardly touched this guy. Bottom of the third. One nothing Bulldog. Adi McHubert back here at Starkville, Duty Noble Field. We welcome you back to our telecast tonight. Well, the upcoming Southeastern Conference Tournament will be held at the Hoover Metropolitan Stadium in suburban Birmingham coming up in a couple of weeks. And you'll want to check out exciting Southeastern Conference baseball, 19th through the 23rd at the Hoover Met. For tickets, call 1-800-277-1700. That's 1-800-277-1700. Reserve ticket books for $70 and Dr. Pepper six packs at $36. That's the 1999 SEC Championship Tournament. Tournament. Bottom half of the third, Josh West, the number nine hitter for Pat McMahon's Bulldogs, leading it off against the Gator right-hander, Jeff Cardozo. 
West hitting 304, six home runs, 23 runs batted in. Let's go, Josh! On a four-game hitting streak, he's five for his last 12. And you got to be careful with him because he's got a little bit of pop. That's six home runs and only 102 at bats. As a matter of fact, he hit a home run in his first career at bat last year. Hey, pitcher! Oh, four! See if Pat turns him loose right here. Pat talking about the progress he's made, just learning to hit in the SEC. Talking about West. We've been reaching for that one. And had there not been a screen in front of us, Nick would have made the catch. Well, how about that? So it's a full count now. I would have had to because that would have been turned around. <laughs> Let it stay. Let it stay. Now the Bulldogs, 339 team batting average, leading the SEC, 13th in the country. We mentioned they're leading the league in doubles now with 132. They're fifth in the country, averaging 10 runs a game. This one popped up. Foul ground. There will be a play. Keen there. One gone. Well, here in Starkville tonight, Mississippi State leading the Gators one to nothing. But around the Southeastern Conference, elsewhere at Lexington, it's Kentucky five and Auburn one. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning there. No score between Ole Miss and Arkansas in a key game in the Western Division in Fayetteville in the second inning. In the third at Athens, it's Georgia three and LSU two. And South Carolina and Tennessee rain. Bad weather coming through the south. Uh, Gators probably escaped a few rain delays this weekend by being out of town. I understand that game is uh, just rain delayed as opposed to being rained down. On the ground, Ellis. Good stretch by Sheely. So two up and two down. Mark Ellis. Well, he'll be missed next year when he graduates. <laughs> Talk about four stellar years as a Gator. Martin grounded into the 4-6-3 double play last time. Up. As a freshman at Florida, Martin hit 291. Last year in his sophomore season for the Gators, he had 305. Playing himself in the shape. He had that bout with mononucleosis. He, he got that sometime in January. Nice trim and left. And it's an easy inning for Cardozo and company. So we're sailing along tonight through three innings here at Duty Noble Field. Our score remains the Bulldogs one and the Gators nothing. I promised us some barbecue, weren't they? That guy right there with the bib on. Like, he, yeah. And I think tonight, in honor of the first RBI, they're going to throw a little curry on it. The shortstop, Vaughn Ellis. <laughs> They've already thrown some curry on it. <laughs> He's got an RBI. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> One nothing Bulldogs, top of the fourth. Maybe the second time around will be better than the first for Florida because they didn't have a clue against Compton the first three innings. He has retired all nine Gators that he has faced, and he has struck out four of them. Ellis popped out to the shortstop, Travis Chapman, in the first inning. You know, it's getting to the point where you, you might want to lay off that slider. It, it, it's so enticing, but he's just putting it right where he wants. Ellis fifth in the history of the SEC in total hits. 
And there is a base hit to right field. Off the fastball. And so that breaks up a no-hit bid by Compton, who the third baseman, Kurt Key. gave up just a little bleeder here. But it was a fastball. I was running back in on him. He gets it at the end of the bat and just kind of squibs it through the the right side almost rolls down on its own, but that, that could get things going here. Now you got a situation where you've got Compton finally throwing from the stretch and maybe not as effective from the stretch. We've seen it happen with pitchers. Kurt Keene, nothing for one after a fly ball to right fielder Brian Weiss. There's Ellis at first. He's 19 for 23 in stolen bases. And one of the advantages, I guess, you have if you're Andy Lopez with all these sliders he's throwing, that's a good pitch uh, that you can send your runner on. Gives him a little bit more time on that off speed to get down there to second base. All right. Kurt Keene looking into the dugout there. Getting the signs from Andy Lopez standing on the front end of the dugout. Two and one the count. This is a sometimes will be a good pitch to do something. Hit and run. Straight steal. See what Andy does here. Ellis being held on by Cliff Wren. There he goes. The hit and run is on as he fouls it off. Yeah, he had it going. Uh, Mark took off at a pretty good jump and Keen put the bat on it, but just foul. Gators have won seven in a row over the Bulldogs here in Starkville. They beat them three in Gainesville last year, then got beat in Omaha in a wild one in the College World Series. Mississippi State won it 14 to 13. The Gators had won two one run decisions earlier in the series. He goes again. The pitch swung on, popped up. Ellis has got to hurry back. Second baseman Lauterhouse waiting for it to come down and can't throw it there in time. Boy, it's a good thing it was up high. Otherwise, Ellis finds himself doubled off on a hit and run. Probably a straight steal with two strikes. And the reason why Andy sent him because it was a slider type pitch that would be called by Mississippi State. Andy knew it and figured his runner would have more time to steal second base on that play. Great jump, as you can see right there, head down. But he he, see, he picks it up, and now because of the uh, the hang time of that pop-up, he's able to get back in time. So one out for Greg Cantalanotti. All right. Catman was called out on strikes in the first inning. He's probably going to look for one of those sliders down and in that he can turn on here. I doubt he'll get a fastball there. Well, the sun now sets fully behind the grandstand, and so the shadow is no longer a problem here as we play tonight in the top of the fourth inning. All right! So the people out there won't lose those ribs in the sun. <laughs> Oh and two the count. And for a high fastball, he struck out twice now. We've seen him do it a couple of times. He goes 0-2. He'll go up the ladder with a fastball. And as good as that slider is, it's so enticing to see a fastball finally. And when that pitch is up in your eyes, you don't have as much time to react and getting those hands above the ball. Of course, that's a pitch you want to lay off of, but it's easier said than done. Jason Dill. Began the night hitting at 320. All right! The batter thought it was a strike. Ellis at first base with two away. Swung out over the top of it. Get on, 
Florida got a leadoff single from Ellis, but he still stands at first base with two gone. A ball and a strike to Dill. Mm. They got him picked up, hung out, and a one, three, six put out. Ellis will be taken down officially from Stewart. One hit, no runs, nobody left. Last of the fourth coming up. It remains one nothing Bulldog. Monty McHubert back here. Bottom half of the fourth inning. One nothing lead is here's the pickoff of Ellis at first. Well, what happened was Mark took off before he uh, made any move anywhere, and he just kind of guessed on it, which is never a good proposition if you're trying to steal base. You don't want to make it a 50-50 guess, and he just took off way too soon and was a dead duck. Brian Weiss leading off the Bulldog fourth inning. Cardozo has had some efficiency to his pitches tonight in as much as he's thrown just 36 pitches through the first three innings. But yet he finds himself trailing one to nothing. As the Bulldog got back to back two out hits in the second inning. 0 oh and 2 the count. Well, John Whitaker has been calling the corners all night for both sides. I don't know what the fans here, obviously, it's the home team. I mean, it could have been off the plate, but get up there hacking. If you're watching the game, you understand what's been happening. Whitaker's been giving the pitchers the corners. Cardozo, two wins and two losses. High chopper, Keene cuts in front of Ellis on the high chop. Nice play there by Keene. One away. This is like a marvel of how and why Adler Doubleday made the bases 90 feet apart. I mean, this is a bang bang play, and by all accounts, with that high chop, you got to think you're going to make it, and then you get nipped at first by a good throw by Keene. Jamie Rock now the hitter. Rock retired on a fly ball to Matt Goss, his only other plate appearance. Nick, could you imagine if Admiral Doubleday decided to make it 90 and a half feet? What wouldn't, a be the, wouldn't be the game we know. No. Mm -mm. This one's foul. Well, again, the same, it's probably in the same realm of thinking is that he was going to make the pitching mound 61 feet. And at the last moment, he went to 60 feet, 60 There you inches. go. I mean, there, yeah, why, why isn't that not 61? <laughs> why did he go 60 and a half? Got just a piece of it. Well, I get, you know, I'll tell you, the day I get to heaven, I got some questions I, I got to have answered right away. I assume Mr. Doubleday's there. <laughs> You're quite sure of your own <laughs> Fly ball hit deep to left, but well fouled. <laughs> At this point, yes. But, but, but who am I? <laughs> That'll be my next question. You got questions, he's got answers. Ellis did all any shortstop could do. That's an infield base here. And this is a nice job of pitching right here by Cardoza. Throws him a pitch going away. And Rock tries to pull this pitch. And anytime you do that, you're going to probably hit it to the left side of the field if you're a right handed hitter. But just hit it just enough to where it was uh, 
up the middle and made a real tough play for Ellis. Now Mark Chapman, or rather Travis Chapman. Travis Chapman, the shortstop. He had five hits against Tennessee. On April 17. Tell you what, Nick, lost in the pitching of Compton has really been, I think, some sharp pitching by Cardozo tonight. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're, they're equally as effective. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than that uh, double by Weiss, which was hit right on the nose. You know, the, that ground ball there and, and the one Curry hit was kind of a pitch going away from him that he was able to make contact on. Both pitchers in command tonight. Off the foot and Overwood's head. They'll have him on the corner. Now the other night at Gainesville in a Florida game, the comeback to the mound was deflected to the second baseman. And the Gator hitter was retired on a one to four to three. The Florida defense didn't get the break here. He kept his hands back and that ball was hit hard through the middle and it was able to uh, hit off Cardoza's foot. But that ball had so much top spin on it because it was hit well. It was launched off of Jeff's foot. So runners on the corners and here's the ever dangerous Cliff Wren. His two out double in the second. Help the Bulldogs score the game's only run as he himself would score. Shallow pop, rudder at third is tagging. Right fielder Catlin already's got a strong arm. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's not in time. And now a throw to second, and he is out at second base. But the run scores as Wren gets the sacrifice fly to drive home rock. In the inning for the Bulldogs to get a run on two hits, no errors, and nobody left. Four are score now, Mississippi State two and Florida nothing. How come so many professional athletes was going to be deep enough to score the runner at third? Yeah, Calinotti has a strong arm, but the problem here is that Cat's going to be going away from the play now and is going to have to come and throw across his body. You can see he's throwing across his body, and that took a lot of the power off the throw. He's got a strong throwing arm, but once he had to do that, and on the play down to second base, and it almost looked like Chapman had his hand in there, but he was called out by Mark McGill. So it's the top of the fifth inning. Jason Dill will lead it off for Florida. Dill grounded out second to first back in the second inning. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Nick, right now, Coach Pat McMahon looks like a genius in changing his Friday night starter up as Matt Ginter had been starting there. And at one point, Ginter was outstanding, but had faltered the last few weeks. Right. So this guy comes out tonight and he looks like the old Ginter. <laughs> That's got to be happy so far. What he has seen is he had such great command of that slider, which has set up anything else he's thrown. Perfect on the inside corner. And when he gets ahead of the hitters, the Gators are looking for that slider. And then run that fastball in on you or have you chase one up the ladder. Oh, that's right down there. Six strikeouts for Compton. Now Peter Nystrom. Pat McMahon did such a great job last year coming in. Uh, he, he'd been the assistant here on two different occasions. And, uh, you know, it's not easy when you follow a legend, Ron Polk, who, who put uh, Mississippi State baseball on the map and so many great teams that he had. And Pat, former Stetson grad, 1976.
And uh, Pat's club last year didn't start out too good. And, you know, when you're a first-year guy, you don't, it's not the best thing you want to have happen. But his team ends up in the College World Series. Did an outstanding job. So kudos to Pat and the success and job he's done here. We mentioned Compton with six strikeouts. Here's the last one. This is you, you almost not sure if he, he didn't like the call or he thought he should have gone after the pitch. Because a hitter that that thinks he should have swung at a pitch that just went by has a tip, typical reaction to that. That's three straight Gator hitters who have struck out. And again, another slide piece by uh, uh, Compton to get Nystrom. Now Ryan Sheely. He was a strikeout victim in the second inning. He leads the Gator club, having struck out now 42 times. But he's also lately been on a hitting rampage. Three game hit streak, seven for his last 13. Yes, sir! That's a pitch right there that Ryan has to go down and get. Because he's taken that pitch a couple of times here tonight. Keep the shoulder in, go down and get it and drive it. He's got the ability. You know, Compton has been consistent tonight, and I say that is. It's now time that the Florida hitters, I think, start making some adjustments. He's walked nobody, so he's, he's been around the plate, and yet he's, he's made them chase some balls, too. There's, there's the pitch right there, but as you can see, at that swing, the shoulder and the head flew open. When I said the shoulder, keep the shoulder down and go get it, this is what he doesn't do here. Now watch that front shoulder is going to fly open, way open right there, and the head follows with it. It has to. about that he struck out the side he struck out four in a row and he's fan eight for the game right now it's as easy as one two three for Compton bottom half of the fifth inning in a rapidly moving game tonight for Starkville two nothing the state leading it two to nothing well there's more SEC baseball action tomorrow as the Ole Miss Rebels meet the Arkansas Razorbacks at Fantville it all gets started at 3 o'clock Eastern Time on your regional home of SEC Sports. Chris Curry, John Nutt, and Josh West, the first three scheduled hitters for the Bulldogs in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Curry singled in a run in the second inning, driving home Wren. Curry now with 42 runs batted in. Curry, uh, Nick, it's not often that uh, you see a player who's been drafted three previous times. Yeah, and, and the reason he was able to do that is a JUCO guy, so he got drafted after high school and then both years of junior college at uh, Meridian. Curry was drafted out of high school in the 26th round by the Giants, then the 17th round by the Tigers, and then the Tigers came calling again, but he fell to the 48th round last year. There it is on the corner. He turned and did the 180 back to the bench. Second strikeout for Jeff Cardozo. Now John Knott from Venice, Florida. First team freshman All-American last year. Drives this ball deep. Goss going back, looking up. It is off the top of the fence. Goss plays it well, however. And it's a stand-up double for Knott. Home run, Knott. <laughs> Missed by about two feet. 
Fastball goes up around his letters, and Cardoza thought it was out of here. You can see by his reaction, but it stays in and goes off the uh, College World Series banner, and Goss plays it back in very quickly. But that ball was hit well and just missed getting out of here. Hit number six for the Bulldogs. Now Josh West, the hitter. He laces this ball. This will get in a run. Single to right field. Not will score easily. West with the RBI. And it's now three to nothing. That's been the sequence tonight for the Bulldogs. Every time they've gotten a hit, just about they've bunched them with back to back, and that'll get the Gator bullpen busy. Well, that's two fastballs hit well, two in a row, and uh, no chance of ch challenging Cattle Noti here. Actually, he threw behind the runner, and Ben Grislasi is going to get up and start throwing the Gator long man slash closer. He'll be in long man duty tonight. Now here's Chris Lauterhouse, the leadoff man. Andy Lopez now out of the dugout to make a trip to the mound. Well, the way Compton's been throwing, I mean, Andy's got to be worried here because the Gators have not swung the bat and find themselves down three. Now, Pat McMahon, on the other hand, is seeing his guy out there looks like he's going to be unbeatable. And he's he's got to figure what, what am I going to do here? I I can just play for an extra run. The way my guy's throwing, so perhaps a hit and run. On uh, I doubt he sacrifices with one out, but might play little ball in a sense of a straight steal or a uh, a hit and run. Well, the other thing to keep in mind too is how well Mississippi State has played this year when they've had the lead. Consider this that. When the Bulldogs have led after seven innings, they are 32 and 0. So, in other words, you're really playing them in a seven-inning game. If you, you haven't done your work with a seventh, you're in trouble. Lauterhouse lifts the fly ball. The left fielder Nystrom will make the catch with a second out. What was that record again? 32 and 0. Would oh, they bring back Bobby Thigpen? <laughs> My goodness, Jeff Brantley. So when they lead after seven, they have not lost a game all year long. Ty Martin, nothing for two. Double play and fly ball. Last year against the Bulldogs, wearing a Gator uniform, Martin went nine for 24. And one of his nine hits was a grand slam home run at McKeithen Stadium back on March the 13th. And that's going to improve the, the Bulldogs' chances against the Gators right there. You take away that kind of offense against you. Yeah, put, the, put them on your side. Yeah, in the big leagues, they make trades for those players, don't they? That's right. <laughs> Speaking of the big leagues, his dad, Dick Martin, seven for been the trainer for the Minnesota Twins since 1972. Probably call in some advice here after the game. You know, Nick, you talked about uh, the ills and the injuries of Martin, and then uh, oh. he has to take one off his instep. Yeah, he, he, he talked about it, caught Monica's separated shoulder and the bumps and bruises of playing baseball. He used to spray the old ethyl chloride on there. Ethel who? Ethel chloride. <laughs> or is that ethyl Mertz? I'm not sure. Here comes Fred now. <laughs> and that's a foul tip we said off the instep. You saw it. Just kind of just, it takes some time here to, to walk it off. Bulldogs leading it three to nothing here in the home fifth inning. Pat McMahon, Jay Logan, the trainer out there looking at it. Yeah, I tell you that out there in the bleachers I took a walk out there behind the, the, the fences and it's like it's like the set from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome they have all these converted trucks and RVs and turret with bleachers on top of them and 
the, the people at Chicago around Wrigley Field, they, they took their cue from this ballpark. It's like it. Waveland Avenue there, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> in, in a lot of these, they've taken uh, bus seats, as you can see right there. That one there needs upholstering. But anyway, uh, they take bus seats and, and boat seats and put them in there. And there's, there's even... Uh, uh, there it is. There's the the original Duty Noble Skybox. Which they're building 18 new skyboxes. Probably not open. as nice as that, but they're building. Hey, that's that's yours, Mick, right there. And uh, as you can see, everything done very sanitary here. Uh -huh. Yeah, the other gloves on. Probably did his backyard uh, with those about three this afternoon. Meanwhile, the baseball game resumed. And it's 0-2. No, Two out runner at first base. Bulldogs with single runs tonight in the second, fourth, and fifth innings. Cardozo in his last start at Vanderbilt last week. No decision. This ball raced into the left center field gap. Look out now. West coming around second. He'll make third. And now he's going to come all the way in. Here's a really throw to the first. Not in time. Florida did not handle it well in the outfield. And so West goes all the way from first base. Credit that run nothing. to third base coach Jim Case because he was right on top of this play. Jim Case saw the nonchalant actions of Matt Goss. Now watch this ball land. Jim Case, the third base coach, is watching this all the way. He sees the fake pump right there, and he goes, go. And if he waited another second, this run would have not have scored. So that's an outstanding job of third base coaching by Jim Case. Of course, the player can't see that, but that's what the coach's job is, and that was outstanding. Four nothing now. Of course, on, on the Florida side, it was just an, an error of omission right there of Goss not getting rid of the ball, ball hitting deep center field, not getting rid of it to the cutoff man right away, not knowing where to throw it. Well, that'll be it then as Andy Lopez coming out. He hit Cardozo fairly hard here in this fifth inning. Dreslowski has not been throwing all that long down there, of course. He's a guy that doesn't need a lot of time to get ready. But the rather unorthodox delivery you got a glimpse of there, the three-quarter sidearm style. So the Bulldogs have scored two runs in the fifth. They now have a four-to-nothing lead, and we'll tell you about the new Florida relief pitcher when we come back in just a moment. Coming out of the Gator bullpen, and Dreslowski has been the most effective pitcher for the Gators this year as he is uh, leading the league and earned run average at 1.83. He's second in the league and batting average against at 220 and leads the SEC. This is his 32nd appearance. And he struck out 70 while walking only 30. Ben Greslowski coming in and Nick, his job, his mission, if you will, is to hold him at four runs. But four runs, it looks awfully large the way Compton is pitching for Mississippi State. Yeah, clearly defined uh, for him, hold them where they are and maybe chip away at Compton. And if you were to end the season today, that man right there would probably be the Gator MVP this year. He has saved them 
constantly this year. And, and you can see the 1.83 ERA doesn't necessarily tell the story, but the, the games that he's come in and shut down the opponents and let the Gators come back and win, from a long relief standpoint, that's the result of the nine wins of, the, of what he has done in that capacity. He's only given up one home run on the year, only hit 220 against them, and he's just, this is his 32nd appearance. So, I mean, it's like he's almost in every game helping the Gators win. Let's take another look here at uh, the third base coach. Yeah, he never stopped at third, so Martin gets a gets an RBI uh, on a single. The runner scores from first base. How often do you see that? Jim Case earned his pay tonight. And you know, you go back if this game ends up being a Mississippi State victory by one run, that might be a big play right there. Well, your job as an outfielder, Nick, isn't it always to to return it to the infield as quickly as you possibly can? I, I don't know if Goss felt that he had no play on the lead runner, so he was looking at the runner around first, but the extra hesitation, you know, with the pump fake. Well, he, he didn't know. Here's where he was caught between. He was caught between throwing it to second base, assuming that the guy was going to go ahead and, and stop on the corners or getting it to... to uh, the shortstop on a play at the plate. He wasn't really sure where he was going with the ball, either the second base, but usually just throw it right to the cutoff guy in front of you, and that's his problem. That's right. All right, a runner at first base. Now, Brian Weiss. 0 for 2 in the game. Fly out and ground out. That's the first pitch to right field. Kent Linotti there to make the catch in one pitch, one out, inning over. But the Bulldogs have scored two runs on three hits. They leave one. And after five innings tonight from Duty Noble Field here in Starkville, it's the Bulldogs four and the Gators. Gators now trailing four to nothing. Danny discussing that last uh, play with Matt Goss. Pretty one-sided conversation. And it's probably what we were just talking about. Brian Compton has struck out eight. He's one hit the Gators through five innings. The only hit tonight was Mark Ellis, who had a leadoff single in the fourth. But he was then later erased on a caught stealing. So through five innings, Compton has faced the minimum 15 hitters. It'll be Taylor Wood, Matt Goss, and Todd Johannes to lead it off for Florida here in the top of the sixth inning. We mentioned Compton making his first SEC start tonight. Just his fourth start of the year. He went six innings against Arkansas Little Rock, three and two-thirds against South Alabama, and five innings against New Orleans. When he struck out nine privateers, that's a career high. He's one shy of that. Wood, first ball swinging, has it to third. Martin throws him out. One pitch, one out. I tell you, if the Gators are going to offer at that slider on first pitch, it's going to be a quick night. Well, you know, Wood struck out the first time up, so I'm trying to get something going here. And this is he starts it off outer third. Actually, uh, right on the plate and breaks the outer third, and he just kind of slaps at it. Now, Goss is being taken down now as Jason Hutton is going to bat in the position of Goss. Goss drew the starting assignment tonight largely for his defensive ability. And as for that reason, he's sitting down right now. The mental error and Hutton. Hutton. Two sliders, two first pitches, two outs. 
And it's tough, you know, you come into a ball game, you haven't seen a pitch yet, and you swing at the first slider, and I guess it was kind of a half swing. But Compton rolling along here. On the count. And he's falling behind 0 and 2, and a fan makes a nice catch. Compton a pitch away here from a five pitch inning. Duty Noble Field here in Starkville, Mississippi, and the Bulldogs leading the Gators by a score of four to nothing. Well, don't miss SEC TV Weekly tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Host Dave Neal will bring you up to date on all the happenings in the Southeastern Conference. That's SEC TV Weekly right here on your regional home for SEC Sports. Jason Hutton stays in the game. He'll play center field now. Jamie Rock leading off the last of the sixth inning. Rock one for two in the game. Played at Gulf Coast Community College in the Florida Panhandle his first two years. Second team all state last year when he hit 347. 12 home runs, 59 RBI. Much better sophomore season than he had as a freshman. Numbers all the way up. Or, or up. Hey. Rock is stockily built, six feet tall. 95 pounder. You get a good look at him now. Hits it hard to rank two. Bulldogs now have nine hits as they get a leadoff single here in the sixth inning. Nice piece of hitting here. Ball going away. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Hits it where it's pitched. It's a fastball that stays out. It's down, but over the plate. And goes down and gets it and goes to the right field with it. Now Travis Chapman. You know, one run here would be very important. Do you, do you, do you actually get a uh, 394 hitter here to drop one down or maybe for a base hit down third base? I'll tell you, if he does drop one down, Keane's about four steps in back of the bag at third base. And it would be tough to make a play here. At worst, you get the, you get another run down to second base. And runs are going to be tough to come by, at least they have been so far. You know, base runners. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just one. The Bulldogs were 42 and 23 last year. They finished under 500 in the league, 14 and 15, fourth place in the West. But then they went down to College Station, Texas, won the Central Regional, which included, of course, the host Texas A&M, and that got them to Omaha, where they made their seventh trip, and they've been there in the College World Series back-to-back -back seasons. He was trying to bunt it, but the pitch ran away. 
I think that's a good call right there. Runs are going to be like diamonds tonight. The way Compton's throwing for the Gators are going to be precious. And uh, Mississippi State now at a four run lead has the luxury to play for one run here. to right. Rock will stop at second. Hit number 10 tonight for Mississippi State. Does the same job uh, right here as as Jamie Rock goes down and gets it. Same exact location. Well, so Chapman getting 394 when the game began has gone two for three. Cliff Renz had a big night with a double and a run scored plus a sacrifice fly RBI. Well, he's a guy that is definitely a bunt situation. He's got one sacrifice bunt on the year. But does Pat McMahon play here with nobody out trying to move the runners up with, with his, one of his power guys up there? Kozlowski tries to see if uh, Ren would tip it off. Now, Ren has had a great collegiate career. 304 hits, 204 runs batted in. He was trying to bunt him along, but right off the end of the bat. Well, really, there's no reason to, I mean, it's a sacrifice situation. Ren probably, you know, is a power guy, doesn't have the experience of dropping balls down for, bunts down for base hits. If he's going to sacrifice, go ahead and square out and bunt it right at the third baseman. If you do that, then you've completed your sacrifice. Big pitch there. Of course, now 0-2, oh, you I, I, he got he to gotta go with, uh, with the guy's strength. And right here, just let him take his half. Big strikeout for Dreslowski. Absolutely big out here. Now you're one pitch away from getting out of it with a ground ball. That was a Dreslowski slider that he's gotten so many hitters with this season. And very effective, especially ahead in the count. Chris Curry now the hitter. One for two in the game. He could do a fairly good job just working corners tonight. The umpire very liberal in his strike zone, John Whitaker. No need to come right over the plate. Good shot at John. He keeps things moving. The Bulldogs trying to snap a streak of Friday night losses. They've lost four straight on Friday night. For the year, they're three and five. On Friday night. Ellis has the big hop, but can't make a play at second. We'll have to come across the diamond. Bulldogs stay ahead of the play. 6-3 put out, and the runners move up. Play right here. Ellis just didn't didn't feel like he could make a play, which he was correct. Great jumps off the, the bag by Rock and Chapman. Well, now John not the hitter. Big cut, not with a lot of power, a big RBI guy. Has 12 home runs in the year, 47 runs batted in. He had been struggling coming into the game. He had just been three for his previous 23. But he had a double his last time up. Nice pitch right there. Good job by not laying off it. Hit it good. There's the runners. 
Travis Chapman at second and Jamie Rock at third. That was a fastball in on the hands, tailed back in. Now he's got him set up for the slider. Chapman at second. That's Rock at third. Bulldogs leading it four to nothing. Threatening to add a couple of more runs here, though, with two out in the last half of the sixth inning. And a beautiful night here in Starkville. You can see uh, Johannes pounding his glove inside, and he's going to slide out to the right. You see the intensity on Grzlowski's face here. He knows what he's got to do. Got to get the Gators in the dugout with no further damage. What a job of pitching by Grzlowski after Rock and Chapman get back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. Ren, Curry, and Knott down in order. And they strand two. We move now to the seventh inning. It's Mississippi State four, Florida nothing. Oh, I'd like as much as we can put on it. A lot of cheddar. How much cheddar is enough? Tons of it. There's nothing better than cheddar. So Wendy's new Cheddar Lovers Bacon Cheeseburger is loaded with cheddar. A lot of cheddar on that burger. Woo! This is one heavy cheddar burger. Along with three strips of hickory smoked bacon and sauteed onions, there are two slices of rich cheddar plus a cheddar cheese sauce. Nothing is missing from this burger. Very cheesy. There you go. Wendy's new Cheddar Lovers Bacon Cheeseburger. You're gonna love it. When I lay awake at night, this is what I think about. That makes two of us. Who got game? Fox Sports News primetime. Let's go. Get the breakdown from the pros who've been there. That is textbook hit and run. Back at the ballpark here in Starkville, Mississippi State leading it four to nothing as we move to the top of the seventh inning. Good job of pitching, Nick, by Grislowski. You've heard of the backdoor slider. This is the front door slider. Backed him off and just had it look like it was going to come inside and then just dropped him down through the front door, got him looking. Compton has made 83 pitches in six innings, a career-long outing for him now as he comes out here in the seventh inning. He's been brilliant tonight with nine strikeouts and no walks. He's allowed just one hit by this man, Mark Ellis. <laughs> Mississippi State bullpen now starting to get ready a little bit down there. In light of the fact that Compton is in uncharted waters here, career long outing. The Mississippi State bullpen warming up down there. Right. Donovan down there warming up. Kevin Donovan. Ellis came into the game tonight hitting 342. <laughs> Ellis just a defensive swing fouled it off. Well, the Bulldogs have a new third baseman now. There's a Darren Wright now in the game playing at third base. Ellis punches it. Wren will flip to Captain. Got him at first base. Ellis went in head first. And that's what you should not do. Don't go in the head first on a play like this, and I'll tell you why. It slows you down, number one. Number two, it gives the umpire the illusion that he's, or, or the, what he's not looking for. He's looking for the foot on the bag. And when you do that, you're not giving him the foot on, your, on the bag. You're giving him the hand on the bag, and chances are he's going to ring it. But it will slow you down, number, number, one, number one priority. Kurt Keene is 0 for 2 tonight. Fly to Weeson right, popped out to Lauterhouse <laughs> in the fourth inning. This one is maybe going to drift back in. Let's see. Nope, going to say just out of reach. It 
Had that comeback spin, but still stayed beyond the screen. Souvenir there. She came to the game and she hammered the ball. God bless him. One and one. Ball hit pretty well, but ballpark will hold it. Rest on the warning track. Two out. Best hit ball of the night for the Gators. Greg Catalanotti, who has struck out twice tonight. Tell you the way West made that play, you think he was leading off next to him? Mm. You think he knows something? <laughs> you know, Compton with a one hit shutout through six and two thirds innings, still facing the minimal number of Gator hitters. Backdoor slider right there, and really at this juncture, no reason to come even close to throwing anything over the plate. Just, just nibble those back doors and hope for the best. The last time he had Catalanotti in this situation, he went up upstairs and got him to chase a high fastball. Let's see if they go back to that here. Why not? Again, that's a tough play for the catcher over there. I mean, Curry could not come up with it. Well, I, I got to think the third baseman's got it. Got a lot better shot mm -hmm. at that. That had enough hang time. Your catcher coming over there. Uh, let's see if Wright looks like Wright is is really not getting involved. He's he's letting the catcher have it all the way. And it would have been a nice play for Darren Wright to come over there, but it's a lot easier for him. The Bulldogs got one run in the second, another run in the fourth, and two in the fifth. Catalanotti <laughs> has the hat trick. He struck out all three times. The changeup got him there. And the crowd tonight at 3,922 coming to their feet for the seventh inning stretch. Golden Starkville here on their feet for the seventh inning stretch. And they've liked what they've seen so far from the homestanding Bulldogs. Meanwhile, the SEC tournament just around the corner. A lot of excitement last year for the Auburn team and all the SEC clubs, a number of them advanced on to Omaha. And the 1999 SEC tournament gets underway May 19th through the 23rd at the Hoover Met. Call 1-800-277-1700. Josh West, first pitch swinging, lofts a fly ball to center field, but Hutton is there. And one away here in the last of the seventh inning. Going to bring up the top of the batting order now, Chris Lauterhouse. Nick, you know it was 42 years ago on this night in the big leagues that Herb Score was hit on the right eye by a line drive off the bat of Gil McDougal. It broke Score's nose and damaged his right eye. Missed the rest of the season and his career was never the same. Never the same. May 7th. 1957. I was Herb a member of the Indians or the White Sox? Or the Indians. There's Compton. Pretty happy about what's happening to him. The best start of his career, best outing of his career. Herb Score was been a member of the Cleveland Indians broadcast team. Lauterhouse one for three. Oh. 
Slaughterhouse, a hero last year in that regional clincher at Texas A&M. He had a two-run home run in that ball game. On the inside corner, see you later then. That was the front door mm -hmm. slider, the same pitch that he threw to get John not looking. And we'll see it again here. Dreslowski working the inside corner. Here he gets a the slaughterhouse window shopping. Get it down. Quickly two up, two down. First plate appearance tonight for Darren Wright. 329 hitter, but six for his last 30. A junior from Stockton, California. One arrow. Darren Wright has started 38 games this year. <laughs> 16 doubles, 29 RBI. <laughs> Bottom of the seventh inning, four nothing lead for Mississippi State. Taylor Wood at second. Inning over. One, two, three, seventh. Well, the Florida team needs base runners now. We go to the top of the eighth inning. It's Mississippi State four and Florida nothing. Who is Speed Vision? It's the guys who put it all on the line. At four to nothing behind Brand Compton's one hit shutout. More SEC baseball action tomorrow as Ole Miss meets Arkansas from Baum Stadium in Fantville. It all gets started at 3 o'clock Eastern time on your regional home of SEC sports. All right, we go to the eighth inning now for Andy Lopez. It'll be Jason Dill, Peter Nystrom, and Ryan Sheely. Dill, first pitch swinging. Flies out to the left fielder. That was the 100th pitch of the game from Compton. Brings up Peter Nystrom. Nothing for two tonight. Compton tonight has not walked a hitter. He's had this season 20 walks in 47 innings coming in. All right. Good call right there, but that pitch is tough to lay off of. Well, there's. Matt Ginter down in the bullpen along with Kevin Donovan. And the way it's going, that might be as far as they get. All right. Looks well, like uh, Devo, Devon, and Bryce. Twenty one the count. Well, Gators need a base runner in the worst way here. They've not had one since the fourth inning, and that was the only one. The nice one. That's a good job taking all the way. I think you have to now when you're down to your final five outs. Go right in. Shortstop Chapman. And it gets away from Ren. 
Mention the Bulldogs having made only 48 errors in the first 49 games. But that's a throwing error on Chapman. And only his ninth on the season. He just held on to it a little too long and threw it into the ground. He was fielding 961 coming in. Only the Gators' second base runner of the game. Now Ryan Sheely has struck out twice. Right. Takes the breaking ball for a called strike. Now at the end of the bat, nothing in two. Now do you go ahead and throw the same pitch which started out even further away and see if uh, Shuley goes after it. He, he has that luxury up 0-2. Or you can have maybe Chase uh, go up the ladder with a fastball. He did. Now he comes back uh, with the slider. Man, of this pitch has been amazing tonight. Try to get him to chase again the high fastball. Now a full count. Has not walked anybody. Hey! Let's see if we can get himself on here. The plot will thicken. Taylor Wood, the on deck hitter for Florida. Let's see if we can get on there and bring the tie and run on deck. Went fastball, a tail back in, and right at the knees, as you said, Mick. Number 11. Sheely and Catalanotti each now have fanned three times tonight. Taylor Wood, 0 for 2. Right. This has been a Great, great outing for Captain and the whole Mississippi State staff. Mission, they had an ERA under three the first 29 games. However, the last 20 games, respectable, but at 4.78, it had been on the rise. They had only been 11 and nine the last 20. But for him to come back and throw this one hit shutout in the eighth inning, that's as good as they could have hoped, if not better. And what does he what does it mean to Mississippi State if he goes the route? I don't know if Pat will pull him next inning, but even even if he does, that still means that the Mississippi State bullpen is going to be pretty fresh after tonight if it stays the way it's been going. Nice Dramont at first base with two gone here on the eighth. Wood laid off of it. Tell he's getting a little bit tired here as he, he's gone past 100 pitches, his longest outing. And you give him the signals here, but obviously with two and two and two outs. Look at Taylor Wood just to get on base. 
And bounced it foul. Steve Kling makes the catch out of the third base coaching box. See, he did the right. Klinger's been around because sometimes you see the third base coach get the ground ball and throw it right back to the pitcher without inspecting it. But Grubby would have none of that. Throw down the game. Sometimes there's a big gash in there, and you've seen you've seen coaches just take it and throw it right back to the pitcher, mm. not even inspect it. Mm. Chapman, the lotter house, the force of Nostra. No runs, no hits, one error, one man left. Bottom half of the eighth inning, our score remains. The Bulldogs four, and the Gators nothing. Around the league, not good news for Florida fans tonight as Kentucky beat Auburn 10-1. And how about that? Brett Shaning, his first loss of the year. He's 10-1. Kentucky has a chance to move into a tie with Florida. And South Carolina and Tennessee, they have been rained out. They will play a doubleheader beginning at 5.30 Eastern time tomorrow in Knoxville. The other thing about that is Kentucky beat Florida in the series this year. So the Florida SEC tournament position, a real precarious straits. As Derek Devon comes on, this is 11th appearance. One win, no loss. 25 in the third innings, have given up 24 hits. Walked 10, struck out 19. And Nick, I think, uh, you know, Coach Lopez brought Grzlowski in to try and hold the fort as it was and give his offense yes. three innings of opportunities. And when they didn't come out, that's when Grzlowski had to come out to be saved for the rest of the weekend. Right. I mean, Andy's taking a calculated mm -hmm. guess here, and he's, he's seen what he needed to see. He goes, I, I'm going to save Ben's arm for maybe another day. Now, he's not giving the game up for dead, but right here, if he can get an, a scoreless inning out of Devo, he saves, and, and Devon here, by by uh, spelling Ben an extra inning, saves maybe 20, 30 pitches for Gerslowski the next two days, which the Gators will undoubtedly need him as they, they have in SEC play. Brian Weiss leads off the home eighth inning. He's swinging on the first pitch. And he fouls it on. Of course, the Gators only down, and I say only, the way Compton's pitching, it's, <laughs> it's tougher than only, but they're only down four runs, and anytime they're a grand slam away from tying it, you're still in the ball game. of saving Greslowski for future work this weekend. He made only 29 pitches tonight, so in effect it was like just a kind of a bullpen outing. You know, you know, right. The guy I, might make it an off day. Obviously a little more intensity, but mm -hmm. it, it is under 30 pitches, and that's good. Ball hit into the gap. Weiss, first hit of the game, going to come on to second base. Cut the bag at second. He's coming for third. And he'll make it with a stand-up triple. Oh, my. That brings the fans out of, out of their seats, a standing ovation. The Gators trouble getting that ball out of left field. Let's see what happens. It gets in the alley, and I think Nystrom's having a tough time getting this thing out. It rattles around out there. Let's see what happens. Tries to pick it up barehanded. And it's tough to do that on a moving ball. That's the Bulldogs' 17th triple on the year, and it has forced the Florida infield now to be drawn in. A leadoff triple. Jamie Rock, the hitter. Yeah, the Gators don't have a choice here. They, they can't afford another run, so they, they're forced to, to pull it in. Rule of thumb in the outfield, the ball's rallying around. If it's moving, glove. If it's stationary, bare hand. Reese 
scores. It's five to nothing. Rock has ripped three hits tonight. Mississippi State now with 12 hits in the game. Well, the slider, not a lot of movement on it. Kept his hands back nice and just ripped it into left. So, Rock with it, you said, three hits in a row. Now, here's Travis Chapman. He's bidding for a three-hit game. Pair of singles. Now, really, the Gator starter tonight, Jeff Cardozo, Pitched well enough. I mean, he was in four and two thirds innings, keeping the game at hand, but no offense proved to be his downfall. I mean, he gave him a run in the second, a run in the fourth. Right. It, it, like you said, uh, no offense, meaning if the Gators have four runs, five runs, uh, maybe you, you keep him around for another couple innings, see what he can do, like Kurzlowski sit the bench for a little bit, maybe bring him in later, but he had to make the move because the bats weren't working. Yeah, this wasn't a case tonight of the Florida starter being bad. No, not at all. Mm -mm. No, no. In fact, uh, as you said, Cardoza did a nice job, but it was magnified with the fact that the Gators weren't countering with anything because of the fact that Compton incredible outing so far. It just seemed worse than it was, so Andy had to make the move and go to his stopper out of the pen sooner than he wanted to. And believe me, he didn't want to go that soon. Ball hit deep to left. And the Bulldogs have now homered in nine consecutive games. Chapman with a two-run shot. His fifth home run of the year. And they blow it wide open now. It's seven to nothing. No, Devon hasn't fooled anybody here. There's another slider with a little movement. And right up into uh, barbecue restaurant number four out there. And a mound conference says big smile on the face of the Floridian Travis Chapman. A new pitcher coming up. Keith Bryce coming in for Florida now. Keith Bryce. Devon faced three hitters. Triple, single, home run. Good night. We'll tell you about Pete Grace when we return in just a moment. Mississippi State now leading Florida. Seven to nothing here in the last of the eighth. As they have scored three runs here in this inning. And a happy bunch of Bulldogs. As Keith Bryce comes on for Florida. The right-hander, Bryce, has been a workhorse for Andy Lopez. He's making his 25th appearance of the year. Has a record of 7-3, 3.78 ERA, 66 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed 69 hits. He's walked 33, struck out 53. Opponents batting 265 against Keith Bryce. Pat McMahon's got a feel pretty good about his situation here as they've broken it open. Seven runs for the Gators, zero. And now the big question really is McMahon, does he try Compton out for the complete game next inning? Andy Lopez, his thoughts here is, there's Compton sitting there. How do we get to Compton? And if we can't, and we got to forget about tonight as soon as possible and concentrate on tomorrow. Cliff Wren now swings on that big breaking ball. And that's uh, Rice's bread and butter pitch right there. The curveball. Keith 
Keith Bryce played his high school ball at Westminster Christian High School for Rich Hoffman down there in Miami, the same high school that produced Alex Rodriguez, the Seattle Mariners. Outstanding seasons for Southern Miss. His three year totals, he averaged 361 with 33 home runs, had 153 RBI. Third all time at Southern Miss for hits with 265 in the three years he played there. And it finds the hole. Bouncing ball single between Keen and Ellis. And now it's misplayed there by Nicer as the Gators coming unraveled here. Rim stands at second base. Probably score that a hit and an error. This is not the way Andy Lopez wants his team to play. This is not the way Andy Lopez teams that we come to know have played. Chris Curry now the hitter. Curry singled in a run in the second. He's one for three. High fly ball. Hutton in the center will make the catch. The runner, Wren, will come on to third base. So productive at bat for Curry. Anytime you can move that runner along, you've helped your club. Runner at third base with just one gone. And that's the beauty of that, too. With one out, you get the runner over at third base. Now the Bulldogs now going to get a pinch hitter. Philip Willingham will pinch hit. He's a 274 hitter. Now, in the last 25 games, Willingham has only been up there for 10 official at bats, yet he's gone five for 10. Been more of a defensive replacement later in games. Balling in the place of not. Willingham looking for a ball he can hit in the air. He's got one sacrifice fly on the air. Gators have to pull their infield in here. And no other choice. Willingham a sophomore from Mobile. He was quite a high school football player. He was all state in football running back who rushed for over 1,100 yards in his senior season two years ago. Fastball, he could drive here. Gators are playing their infield not quite all the way in, kind of a halfway, and that's probably based on the runner at third speed. And that is the first walk of the game. That's hard to say at any level. <laughs> the first walk of the game came in the bottom of the eight. Josh West, one for three tonight. And an RBI single in the fifth inning. 
He's also scored a run. Big cut on a high hard one. Good cut, good cut. Gators looking two here, playing two up the middle. Gator defense turned a double play tonight in the first inning. Ty Martin grounding into a 4-6-3 double play. Great crowd out here tonight, isn't it? Mm. Enthusiastic. And very likely to be even larger tomorrow. Well, that's what uh, Pat McMahon was telling me. He said that the crowds really come in here Saturday and Sunday because they're all driving in here on Friday. Good way to spend your Mother's Day weekend, huh? Mm. Well, SEC ball. Win one for mom. Of course, Hollywood not to be outdone. Opening their big picture, the mummy for Mother's Day. I saw that, yeah. yeah. British film, I think. Mm, oh, absolutely. <laughs> One would assume. All three in strength, too. Well, the series will continue throughout the weekend, and uh, tomorrow's pitchers, Hank Toms, with a 2.17 ERA, number two in the league. Seven and three record for Mississippi State. And Sergio Rodriguez, a left-hander, 1-0, will be the Florida pitcher tomorrow. Watch it now. The game will start at 6 p.m. Eastern time. He got him. On a 3-2 pitch for out number two. Runners remain on the corners now. And Chris Lauterhaus coming up. You know, utility infielder Lake Toms meets you at the airport when you get off at the uh, GTR, the Golden Triangle Regional. Hmm. You're not five feet in the place, and there's a giant picture of uh, Lake Toms. Yes. Waving to you. Mm -hmm. Some ad from Mississippi State Athletics or something. There, there he was. His cousin in Gainesville, I'm familiar with. Lake Alice. Lake Alice has been there a lot of years. Mm -hmm. She's a survivor. On the corner for a called strike. Bulldog fans out for blood here. And the knees again for a strike. One and two. Bulldogs with three runs in this inning. I think this is a message Andy is sending, sending Bryce out here to, in a situation where you know, down seven runs, he didn't have to do this. I think he's saying, look, I'm I'm sending my best guy out here, and we're going to compete all nine innings. And I'm showing you that I'm competing all nine innings, and I'm putting my best available pitcher out there. Well, he's made an earlier message. She's a survivor. for a called strike. Come on, Blue. They don't play anyway. Bulldog fans out for blood here. And the knees again for a strike. One and two.
Bulldogs with three runs in this inning. I think this is a message Andy is sending, sending Bryce out here to, in a situation where, you know, down seven runs, he didn't have to do this. I think he's saying, look, I'm, I'm sending my best guy out here and we're going to compete all nine innings. And I'm showing you that I'm competing all nine innings and I'm putting my best available pitcher out there. Well, he's made an earlier message when replaced an outfielder in the game. But again, his hands are largely tied because of so many injuries in the club. And yep. There's only so much you can do. You know, you just, you've got to just let them go play. Bryce must know something here. Well, there's the runners getting their lane. Let's see if they try and steal a run. They send the runner, and the pitch is driven. A gapper to left center field. Wren scores. Willingham coming around third. He is going to score. A double for Ladderhouse, and it is nine to nothing. RBI's 33 and 34 for Lauterhouse. They've now out hit Florida tonight 15 to 1. He just left the fastball up in the letters. That's their third double of the game and their 134th on the season as they are on pace to break the team record for doubles. And now the Ninth Bulldog batter of the inning, Darren Wright. In the Florida ninth inning, the eight, nine, and one hitters scheduled up. Hutton, Johannes, and Ellis. Mississippi State leading it nine to nothing in only the fourth career start by Brian Compton, his first ever in the SEC. He is within one pitch of no hit baseball through eight innings. He's one hit the Gators. As we come to the ninth, Jason Hutton will lead it off. And by the way, right. Philip Willingham stays in the game defensively for Mississippi State. He's their new left fielder. Hutton popped out on the first pitch he looked at in the sixth inning. That was his first plate appearance tonight. He came on in the middle of the game replacing Matt Goss in center field. Jason Hutton's dad, Tommy, former Expo, Philadelphia Philly, now color man with the Florida Marlins. Compton off the mound. Throws him out. Well, Florida had won five consecutive Southeastern Conference games prior to this one. But they catch the Bulldogs on the rebound here following a tough weekend in Fayetteville last weekend. They lost some tight games. This is their final three home games of the season, so maybe not their best time to be playing Mississippi State. Right. Johannes, nothing for two, having struck out twice. 
Compton has struck out 11 in the game and has not walked anyone. Matter of fact, the Gators have had just two base runners. And only one hit. And he's been in total command. Compton the slider. Probably through the first seven innings. Then he started mixing the fastball and spot net. Keeping the Gators off balance with that pitch. In the later innings. And now back at the slider. Down the right field line. Johannes singles. Florida's second hit. That was on the fastball. Goes out and gets it. Pitch away right down the line. Now Mark Ellis, who prior to that base hit by Johannes had Florida's only other single, a fourth inning base hit. He's one for three. Give you an idea of how effective Compton has been tonight. This is only the fifth hitter in the entire game that he's pitched from the stretch to. Mm. All right. One and one the count. Nick Belmonte, Mick Hubert here at Duty Noble Field in Starkville. We're in the top of the ninth inning, and Mississippi State leading nine to nothing in this opening game of the three-game series. Mark Ellis, the hitter, and a strike on the inside corner. Mississippi State got one in the second, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, and then. Put up five runs to blow it open in the last of the eighth inning. Hey! Ellis has it to Chapman, to Latterhouse, on Corin, and the ball game is all over. Six to four to three. Double play number 45 for the Bulldogs, and high fives and handshakes. Congratulations for Brian Compton. He's the star of the game tonight for Mississippi State, throwing a complete game, two hit shutout in which he struck out 11 Florida Gators in the game, and Mississippi State has handily won the opening game of this series by the final score of 9 to nothing. Nick and I will return to recap from Duty Noble Field in Starkville in just a moment. Tonight, nine runs, 15 hits, one error. The Gators, no runs, just two hits, two errors. Compton, the winner, six and one, and in his career, he's now 10 and one. And the losing Florida pitcher, Jeff Cardozo, now at two and three. Only the fourth complete game of the year by Mississippi State, but they're involved in their fifth shutout as they completely handcuffed the Gators tonight. And a good time had by all here at the ballpark is uh, well, it was good barbecue for those people. And then the, the taste of victory is also sweet well for the home team. Well, I tell you what, they, they played an outstanding game, and it, it all goes starts off with Compton, the way he had that slider going early, uh, and then they got the bats working, and just enough till they broke it open back in the, the eighth inning, and you know, outstanding defense and timely hitting, and all the great pitching, and that's the way you got to play baseball this time of year because you're only one weekend away before you start the SEC playoffs, and that's how Pat McMahon wants his team to play. Well, once again, the final score here tonight, Mississippi State 9 and Florida nothing. Nick and I will return. We'll look at the scoreboard and have some closing comments right after this. It's Florida here in Starkville for the first time in a decade. Florida had won seven straight times in this ballpark, but for the first time since 1989, the home team has beaten Florida here 9 to nothing and a big smile on the face of Brian Compton a complete game two hit shutout tonight he had a lot of run support too as uh, Rock had three hits Chapman had three hits Lauderhouse with a couple Wren with a couple 
Chapman also had two RBIs, as did Lauterhouse. And so Mississippi State defeats the Gators by a score of nine to nothing. So the SEC standings right now with South Carolina rained out tonight in its game at Tennessee. They'll play doubleheader tomorrow. Right now, Carolina a half game in front of Florida and Kentucky, but Kentucky is holding an edge over Florida because they won the season series. That's the way the Eastern Division shapes up right now. And in the West, Arkansas at 17 and seven, they are in the lead. And by the way, they're leading in their game tonight over Ole Miss in the eighth inning. Alabama is next and then Ole Miss. LSU red hot, having won four in a row. And then Mississippi State also doing well. Now 13-11, Auburn in the basement, 13-12. and 12. Yeah, and I know Mississippi State fans, they, they want to see Arkansas beat Ole Miss. Uh, not only are they a rivalry, but they, they think that they can move up to a better seed uh, if Ole Miss loses this weekend. That was a crowd reaction when they announced the score of that. Everybody was happy to hear that. But it was the killer seas. Uh, we had Compton on the mound and uh, Chapman with the bat. So, uh, you know, Andy there talking to his club. They got to figure out a way to say, hey, look, this is only one loss. We could, we could still win this series coming back tomorrow. Nick, as always, I've enjoyed it. Look Pleasure, forward Rick. to it again. And uh, for those of you watching on Sunshine Network in Florida, Florida Gator baseball comes up again on Tuesday night from Gainesville when Florida will host Central Florida. Once again, the final score, Mississippi State 9 and Florida nothing. For Nick Belmonte, I'm Mick Hubert saying so long from Starkville where the final score, the Bulldogs 9 and the Gators nothing. Be sure and catch more SEC baseball tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern time.